For the music of the Luzon Lowlands, let us first recall the different musical elements that you have learned in your previous music lessons. The first element is rhythm. Rhythm is a regular repeated pattern of sounds. It serves as the pulse of the musical composition. This element has three components, beat, tempo, and meter. Do you think you can identify these components in a certain music while listening to it? Have you experienced nodding your head or tapping your foot every time you hear music? If so, you are actually feeling the beat of the music. In singing your favorite video of the tune, you are actually singing the rhythm because of the different note durations of the lyrics of the song. Tempo is the speed of the beat. Every music has its own speed, which depends on the mood of the whole music. Most happy tunes are fast, while sad music is relatively slow. And the meter, which composes of time signature, is a combination of strong beats and weak beats. For example, 4-4 four, four time signature is like counting 1-2-3-4. One, two, three, four, and so on. This type of meter is commonly used in pop songs. In three, four times signature, you discount one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. This meter is commonly used in waltz music. For the time signature two, four, you discount one, two. One, two, one, two, and so on. Marches, polkas use this kind of meter. The second element is about the softness and loudness of the music. The dynamics. This can be gradual, or sudden, or abrupt. Dynamics in music suggest the emotional aspect of the composition. Soft music suggests themes such as love, while loud or strong, music suggests bravery or war. The next element is the most obvious among all musical elements. The melody. It is the organized sequence of single notes. In other words, it is the main tune of the musical piece. It is what you hear and what pertains in your head. Vertical arrangement of sound in a musical piece is called harmony. It is a simultaneous sounding of two or more notes. This element can refer to the chords produced, the accompaniment styles, and the counter melodies. Texture. This is all about the thickness of the sound. In the three diagrams below, the lines represent the melodic moment of a musical piece. For example, in the monophonic texture, only single line can be seen which means there is only one melody. Or tune playing. It is like you are singing alone in the bathroom. In homophonic texture, a single melody is present with an accompaniment of an instrument or several instruments. It is like you are singing with a video of a machine. In polyphonic texture, Two or more melodic contours or lines are playing simultaneously. It is like you are singing with others in a choir contest. The timbre. This is the quality of the sound heard. If you and your friends sing Bahai Kubo in unison, you can easily distinguish each other's voice based on the quality of the sound of your voices. Now that you have reconstructed your previous knowledge about the different musical elements, you are now ready to explore one of our cultural identities, the Luzon Dolan Fox Songs. Luzon 
Lola, the music is made up of simple vocal and instrumental music. Primarily, a product of daily experiences from folks like farmers, fishermen, artisans, vendors, and other common people. Family or community members learn this music orally, which they sang in their native tongue. Mostly, the persons who originally made this music were unknown. So, do you have any idea on what is a folk song? Correct! Folk songs are songs written by the folks and are sung to accompany daily activities, such as farming, fishing, and putting the baby to sleep. Folk songs in general have the following characteristics. Number one, the lyrics are according to the native tongue. Because songs are based on the daily experiences of the people in a particular place and the message of the song needs to be understood. Easily to be appreciated, the lyrics of the songs are written or sung in their own dialects. For example, the Tagalog folk songs came from the people who speak Tagalog, like Bahay Kubo, Deron Deron Sita, Magtanim Ay Bibiro. The Ilocanos have their own Manang Biday and Pamuli Nabe, the Kapampangans at Inkupong Sing, and the Bikulanos, the Rumbangi, are just a few among the folk songs of the zone that are sung in their own dialect. Why do you think it is important for a folk song to be sung or written in their native tongue? Exactly, because folk songs are passed down through oral tradition family or community members, hence learned by mere memorization. Singing is a form of social banding among early Filipino families because they did not have access to internet, TV, and radio during that time. Singing folk songs became their favorite pastime. The third characteristics of folk songs is Unknown composers and lyricists. Most composers of Filipino folk songs are unknown because songs are just based on daily experiences and are passed down orally. Fourth, simple key signature of the song. Do you know how to play a guitar? If you can play this instrument, you can try to play a simple folk song while playing. You will notice that it starts with a particular key and ends in that same key. That only shows the simplicity of the dessert folk songs. Number 5. Double, triple, or quadruple are common meters used these meters were very common during the time. The dances and common songs are based on these meters. The composers of the folk songs adapted these rhythmic patterns to their compositions. Number six, primarily based on the community's culture, tradition, and livelihood. And the last characteristic of folk song is short and simple. Aside from the Tagalog, Several other dialects are used by unknown composers from Luzon in composing their own Dolad folk songs, such as Ilocano, Kapampangan, Pangasinense, and Bicolad. Spanish and other Western influences are very evident in the construction of the songs, such as the meter use and the minor and the major modes. We have discussed the different folk songs of the Zun and how they were passed down from generation to generation. Just like the vocal music, the instrumental music during the time was very popular. Today's different popular K-pop groups or rock bands give us entertainment. But during the early days, there was one instrumental ensemble which provided our grandparents with the music needed for the celebrations. Terondalia! This is an instrumental group that is made up of string instruments and is sometimes called the Filipino String Band. 
Although this ensemble is very much associated with Filipino culture, historians claim that it originated from Spain. During the colonization, they brought with them the Spanish Mandalia, which composed of pandurias, violins, guitars, flutes, tambourines, castanets, and triangles. Later, the Filipinos modified the instruments to fit to their culture. But how did the rondala get its name? According to Dr. Antonio Molina, a national artist for music, the rondala started as a very informal group of music-loving Filipinos. During the Spanish occupation, the governors asked civilians to guard the mansions at night. Their job is to go around the governor's mansion all night. This is called ronda, or to make rounds. The civilians became bored with this daily routine and decided to make music using guitars and bandurias while making rounds. Thus, they are called rondalia, which means making music while doing rounds. The rondalia instruments 1. Banduria It is an instrument with the highest pitch range. Usually, this instrument plays the melody. The specific notes of the strings are F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, or Fa sharp, T, Mi, La, Re, Sol. Laud and Octavina. This instrument play the contrapuntal or counter. Their strings are tuned like the Venturia strings, but its range is one octave lower. We also have 14 strings. The guitar. Guitar is a popular instrument with usually six strings. It is typically played by its humming or plucking the strings. It plays the rhythm or beat of the musical piece. Bajo de Unas. This is the largest instrument of the rondalia. This string instrument has only four big strings, but there are rare bass instruments that have six strings. It plays the bass part of the musical piece. The notes of the strings are E, A, D, G. Like the instruments of rondalia, the Zun Fox songs also have diverse characteristics in relation to the place where they originated. Most of these songs have Latin influences or mostly Spanish. Our third topic will focus on the music that's used in liturgical celebrations, that is, liturgical music. But before we explore the music, let us first know what liturgy is. Liturgy is a big set of ceremonies that are used during public worship in a religion. Every religion or sect has its own rights for praising God. This may be in a form of Bible sharing, testimonies, singing, dancing, and chanting. For the Catholics, liturgy is about God's saving work present in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And the highlight of this tree is the celebration of the Holy Mass, wherein the priest is the main celebrant. The Holy Mass is the highest form of liturgy, with which the body and blood of Christ is the center of the whole celebration. Liturgy is a ritual prayer of a community, and each member takes part in the celebration. And this is where liturgical music comes in. The first type of liturgical music that Filipinos learned from the Spaniards was in Latin. During the liturgy, they sung Gregorian chants, hymns, and all forms of sacred music in Latin. Gradually, aside from singing, Spaniards taught the natives to play musical instruments. Later on, the music in different churches blossomed. In 1857, a voice choir was formed in Santo Domingo Dominican, convent, and later a pipe organ was installed. In 1601, the first orchestra was formed in Augustinian convent in Guadalupe. In 1643, the Manila Orchestra was organized by a prince. Between 1816 to 1824, the famous Banco organ was built. In 1870, Marcelo Adonai, the first native Filipino to compose a mass, led an orchestra which was formed at San Agustin Church in Intramuro. Because the natives wanted the liturgy that they can understand aside from the Latin liturgical celebrations in churches, 
extra liturgical services outside the churches evolve. The Patuluyan, Pabasa, Salubok, and other forms of devotions were sung in Spanish and their native tongue. In 1903, Pope Pius X encouraged the participation of the congregation in the celebration of the liturgy. This led to the use of local language in churches like what we have today. We may have different religions, but most of these have the same roots. Christianity. We may have not noticed it, but a religious activity in our country is not complete without music. During the celebration of a Holy Mass, there are certain parts that need to be sung by the community. The following are parts of the Holy Mass with which the community must sing. For part one, we have introductory rites, gathering song, Lord have mercy, and Gloria. Part two, liturgy of the word, the sponsorial song, and gospel of acclamation. And part three, liturgy of the Eucharist, holy, holy, memorial acclamation, great amen, Lord's prayer and concluding doxology, lamp of God, Communion procession, theme of praise after communion. Other times when the choir or people sing include the processions, like the presentation of the gifts and processional. The Philippines was under Spanish rule for more than 300 years. No wonder why a vast part of our culture is under the influence of that country. And very evident of these influences is our deep faith in God and our inclination to music. Aside from the Holy Mass and other Christian religious services, the lowlands of the zone have various Christian traditions which are used by different communities. These activities are believed to have a large impact in preserving our culture and faith. Songs were sang in Spanish and other dialects they fully understand. In the lowlands of the south, there are various religious beliefs that are experienced in almost every Christian community. The Pabasa or the Masyod, the Salubo, the Flores de Mayo, Santa Cruzan, and the Pastores. Are just some of the many religious celebrations in the Philippines. These traditions are practiced mostly by Catholics and uses a mixture of Spanish and Filipino music, the Pasyon or Pabasa. It's a narrative of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is written in stanzas of five lines following a strict number of syllables and rhymes. The whole text is sung throughout the Lenten season, although some musical elements vary in some provinces. After the Lenten season comes the Easter season. This tradition starts with the Salubo, a reenactment of a Christ meeting with His mother, the Virgin Mary at the time of the His Resurrection. Here a child dresses an angel is covered by ropes from a high platform to lift the morning veil of the grieving mother, while other children, dressed in angel costumes, sing the Regina Caeli Lateri, meaning Queen of Heaven. Like the Passion, its tune is different in every province. Torres de Mayo, or the Flowers of May, is a Catholic festival on the month of May. The song Ally is sung while the flowers are being offered to the image of the Virgin Mary. It is held in the church or chapel. One of the most awaited and colorful celebration, not only in Luzon but also in other parts of the country, is the Santa Cruz. It is a religious historical event that shows the finding of the Holy Cross by the Queen Helena and her son, Constantine the Great. Here, the Galician courts show off in their beautiful gown as the marching band accompanies the procession with the music Dios de Salve. One of the popular celebrations in our country, Christmas has also its own share of localized religious activity. Nicolandes Pastores, or the Shepherds, the Spanish introduced tradition in the late 1800s until now, plays a major part in the Yule celebration in the Bicol region. This tradition is about the shepherds celebrating the birth of Christ through singing and dancing. Although most of the religious rites have Western or Spanish influence, some have a fusion of indigenous Filipino musical forms 
and Western Christian practices. Our country is also rich with different genres of instrumental music. And during religious festivities, one musical group still plays an important role, the brass band. A fiesta is not a fiesta without the music of the brass band or the marching band. Its music brings a joyful mood to everyone who hears it. In even processions at night, a brass band accompanies the people who show their devotion to a saint. But what is a brass band? What are its instruments? In the Philippines, this music group became popular during the 20th century. Although, there were some accounts by historians that during the Spanish time, the brass band music was already heard. A brass band is a music ensemble composed of woodwind, brass wind, and percussion instruments. Brass wind instruments are instruments made up of brass or metal. A player produces sound by buzzing the lips into the metal mouthpiece. Although the early types of these instruments are made of wood, shells, or toss, today's modern instrument is made entirely of brass. The trumpet. The trumpet is the smallest instrument in the brass family. It is usually plays the melody of the music because of its bright and vibrant sound. The trombone. The trombone is the only instrument in the brass family that uses a slide to change pitch. You play the trombone by holding it horizontally, passing into the mouthpiece, and using your right hand to change pitch by pushing or pulling the slide to one of seven different positions. The French horn. It comes from the French hunting horn of the 1600s and produces a wide variety of sound ranging from very loud to very soft and from harsh and blary to mellow and smooth. The sousaphone. This instrument is known as the bass. The bell is above the player's head and projecting forward. A woodwind instrument is a musical instrument which produces sound when the player blows air against a sharp edge or through a rib. Most of these instruments are made of wood but can be made of other materials such as metals or plastics. The flute is an aerophone that produces its sound from flow of air across an opening. The sound it produces is tin in timbre. The piccolo flute. This instrument is smaller than the flute and has a thinner sound. The clarinet. This instrument is a straight cylindrical tube with cylindrical bore and a flared bell. It has a single weight mouthpiece. in concert bands, military bands, marching bands, and chess bands. The tenor saxophone is a medium-sized member of the saxophone family. It is used as a large mouthpiece with ligature. It is easily distinguished by the band in its neck. The Percussion Family Traditional Philippine brass bands only have this major percussion instrument. The snare drum, the bass drum, and the cymbals. The snare drum is also known as the side drum. 
It is known for its cylindrical shape and a powerful staccato sound. This instrument is often used in orchestras, concert bands, and marching bands. It is played with drumsticks or brush. The bass drum. The bass drum produces a low pitch that serves as the rhythmic guide of the ensemble. The cymbals. The cymbals consist of thin, normal round plates of various alloys. The heavier the cymbals, the louder the volume. You discovered how religious Filipinos are. This virtue is manifested not only in our words and deeds, but in the different songs and rituals that we artistically crafted for religious gatherings and celebrations. Pop songs, liturgical and devotional music, brass band, and rondalia are the things that you have learned today. That's all for today. I hope you enjoy our lesson. Things will get even more fun and exciting with our next episode. Have a good day, everyone!